Lee, Community Manager here at Hemlock Farms. Going to start with the election letter. Most of you should have received it by now. It did go out uh, late last week. Uh, election letter has uh, two different ways you can vote. Uh, the preferred way is online. And if that's the case and you want to uh, vote online, there is a QR code right there or else we do also have the website uh, that you would go to. You do need to register, so you want to do that now. Do that right away. Remember your password, your login, so that when you can vote, when the voting opens on July 13th, you log back in and then you'll vote at that time. Uh, also, if you want to... Uh, for some reason split your votes every lot gets two votes if you wanted to split those uh, you can do that or if you own multiple lots and you just want to combine all of those together you can also do that so uh, a couple things you can do there uh, John Wormuth can help out with some of the uh, information you might need and uh, for that uh, voting this year uh, so I would contact him first he's at the administration office or his email and um, he can help with some of the information. If it's registration, you forgot your code or something to that, then it has to go to our judge of elections, uh, which is at uh, William Owens, uh, our auditor, uh, and that's the email that's included in the, uh, in the letter for that. You do also have the option of uh, paper ballot. If you want to do a paper ballot, you need to act quick on that. You'll have to send, submit your information to receive your paper ballot and the deadline for that is June 24th, 2024 that it would need to be postmarked by. So make sure that uh, if that's what you're trying, if you that's your, your preference for voting that that's the route that you're going uh, and doing that quickly. Next I want to talk about Proposition 2 this week and that proposition is the Mailroom CIF expansion project and this is to authorize the Board of Directors to expand an amount up to $700,000 from the capital improvement fee, which is the CIF fund, in accordance with the HFCA bylaws for the design and expansion of the current mailroom. Now, hopefully you've been watching Hannah's videos on this, explaining why we need to expand the mailroom, uh, also explaining how the mailroom works here at, at uh, Hemlock Farms. Uh, We've been getting a lot of packages really since COVID, the amount of packages that the mailroom gets on a daily basis. Hannah says it's up to 1,500 per day. In the, and during the holidays, it doubles. So, and if you've ever seen through the window, the space back there, there's not a lot of space. What this expansion is, is it gives her more space in the back and it also adds an area for their trucks to pull in through a garage door so they can unload those. This also gives us ADA doors in the front in the breezeway there so that they'll open up uh, kind of like a grocery store where they go uh, to the sides to allow uh, people just to walk in and not have to deal with a, a, a door ADA compliant for that so big changes there necessary changes due to our mail room and I know there's been questions about the hours and why can't uh, packages be delivered right to the house Hannah does a great job of explaining all of that, so I'm going to uh, refer to her videos for that. Uh, check out the, uh, the web pages. We have those set now. There's uh, uh, the, a main one that's HFCA Election 2024, and then from that, each proposition has its own page with any articles or videos for that. So please check that out. There's a link in the C-Blast on that so that you can... Uh, study that up a little bit more and understand why we're expanding that mailroom and really everything that has to do with the mailroom in that. also want to talk about the CIF fund. That's the Capital Improvement Fund. This is money that's collected whenever a lot transfers. Uh, they have to pay last year's dues and that money goes into a big pot. That money can only be spent with the member's approval, so that's why we're bringing this project to the membership. The great thing about the CIF is it doesn't affect your dues. That money is separate from your dues, and again, it's paid by people that are moving into Hemlock Farms here. So the way that we're paying for this project is the CIF money, which means that uh, we don't have to ask the members uh, to increase the dues for this project alone. So. Uh, take a look at all of that, but uh, that's Proposition 2 that's coming to you uh, for the July vote. I want to remind everybody about an e-blast that went out on Wednesday of this week about committees and re-signing up for committees, or if you haven't been on committees, signing up for committees. Uh, that e-blast went out with a jot form where you can go in, 
put you all of your information and then select the two committees that you want to be on or if you want to be on elections as a third committee that might be an option that the board will decide when they uh, do their organizational meeting in early August so uh, for those that don't know the committee year starts in August goes through July you'll have until uh, mid-July to sign up for those committees so do it right away and then in August you'll get seated for that new committee so You'll, the JOT form is available online. All you got to do is fill out your information, and then there's just a list of those nine standing committees. Check off the two that you want to, or one if you only want to be on one committee, or if you want to be on three, you can pick elections as your third committee. Um, submit it in, and then you're good to go. We also have them at the office for those that don't want to do the JOT form. Just come into the office. We'll get you a paper uh, a copy, and you can just fill it out there. So. Just remember, it's all due by July 14th, so you just need to do that here in the next months. also want to remind everybody that on June 26th, the Conservancy is uh, doing a walk, and that's with the uh, Fish and Boat Commission, and he's going to discuss water-related recreation and regulations in our area, and then answer any questions. So that'd be a good opportunity to learn more about the fishing regulations. Uh, here at Hemlock Farms and within our lakes and ponds with that. So definitely take advantage of that. Let's go to Zappy now for that Public Works update. Good morning, everyone. Mike Crockett, your Hemlock Farms Public Works Director. We are here live at the Refuge Center this morning. Um, I'm going to do a couple shots here, uh, give you a perspective of what we have up here, if you haven't been up here before. I'm standing right in front of the bulk trash open top container. Uh, trash removal is a large recurring expense. Uh, every discarded item has a, a value even after its useful life has expired. Today we will discuss bulk, discuss bulk trash and how to obtain a bulk trash permit and properly discard of your bulk trash at the Refuse Recycling Center. Bulk trash is any item not suitable for trash compactors. It is usually an item without any compaction value. These items include furniture, large and small appliances, construction debris, windows, and sinks. To discard these materials at our refuse center, gather up your bulk trash, visit the administration office on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Saturday to obtain a bulk trash permit. This is a receipt showing that you have paid for the items you wish to discard. Bring your items with your paid trash receipt to the recycling center. An attendant will help you identify the proper container to use the open, in the open area. As always, please follow any instructions our attendant might have and be patient with the staff as they are quite busy and but are glad to help you to answer any questions you might have. If they can answer your questions, please feel free to email us at dpw at hfca.com. Standing in front of the two uh, compactors and this is for household trash only. Uh, we do not like any wood or leaf debris in them. As you can see from our sign here, it, it, there, there is unacceptable materials. There is quite a list there, so like I said, this is pretty much just for household trash only. Thank you. Uh, I'm standing in front of the scrap metal open top. This is only for metal. Please do not pull, put bulk items like furniture or anything else in this container. It is basically for metal and it gets sent out for uh, recycling and it actually is a money maker for Hemlock Farms. We do get some money back for this, but like I said, it is only for metal only, and please, if you can, do not leave items on the ground in front of the concrete wall. Please try to get them over the wall into the, into the open top. If you do need help, please ask one of the attendants, and they'll be glad to come up and help. Thank you. Thanks, I appreciate that. Now Nicole's up at Fawn Hill. Pool's gonna open this weekend, so take it away, Nicole. Nicole Fernesti, your assistant rec director here at Hemlock. So let's talk Fawn Hill Outdoor Pool. Actually, Brian, could you help me with this? Hey everyone, my name is Brian. I'm the boss coordinator for Hemlock Farms. Me and my staff have been here all week trying to get the pool ready for the Saturday, the grand opening at 11 o'clock. Hope to see you there. And that's all I have for you today. Back to you, Nicole. Thanks, Brian, and thanks to the entire team. Everybody chipped in to help get this pool ready for the weekend so we can celebrate the warm weather and enjoy Father's Day weekend at Fawn Hill. Okay, so, do you know where I am right now? I am standing right outside the Youth Center, which is located right next to the administration office, which is also right next to the annex building and right behind the library. So a lot of times we have all these programs going on at the youth center and everyone says, 
Where's the youth center? It's right here. So, we have lots of stuff coming up this summer. Lynette and her team at the youth center put a lot of time and hard work into this. So, I'm gonna run down the list, starting with this weekend. We've got a pop-up Father's Day craft that you could do over at the youth center. We've got a summer bucket list starting, which includes things like slip and slide, water balloons, all that kind of fun summery stuff. We've got a summer scavenger hunt, which if you remember the one we did in the winter, we hid snowflakes throughout the community and you had to go and find them. This time we've got ice cream cones and beach balls. So make sure you try and find those throughout the community. We've got Teen Cuisine Tuesdays happening here at the Youth Center. We're gonna teach the teens how to make some interesting, fun summer treats. No bake, don't worry. So there'll be a lot of yummy treats there. Maybe they'll bring them home to you. Slip and Slide Saturdays. I'm pretty sure this is for the kids, even though I wanna do it, um, but they're gonna do Slip and Slide every Saturday in the backyard of the Youth Center, obviously weather pending. And this and this and this and this and all the things so if you have any questions on any of that you can talk to Lynette and her team at the Youth Center you can ask any of us over at the administration office and as always it's posted everywhere website newspaper happenings all throughout the community you can find this information anywhere and lastly calling all young actors and actresses we are putting on a production with the director, Dana Thompson, of Dear Edwina Jr. So we're gonna start rehearsals and auditions for this July 3rd in the Steer Barn at 315. So if you're interested in something like this, spread the word to all the kiddos that are interested in drama to get to the Steer Barn July 3rd at 315. All the information, we'll be taking signups. It's gonna be a fun day. It's gonna be an awesome presentation. If you want more information on this, you can reach out to myself, Amy Strapic, or any of the girls in the administration office, and we'll be happy to help you. Have a great weekend, everybody. Back to you, Sean. Thanks, Nicole, appreciate that. It should be a fun weekend, and pools are open, summer's here, and the heat's coming. Everybody have a good weekend.